So I want to spare no further ado. I've worked with this man almost 10 years. And I think it's a privilege to be here with him today. We thank God for Pastor Arthur Pawlowski. We thank God for the ministries that he leads on. Amen. Praise the living God. We are here for a specific purpose. And I'm telling you, when something is good and righteous and holy, the devil will show up. The devil will show up because the devil hates the truth. The devil hates freedom. He wants you to be slaves. He wants you to be wearing masks. He wants you to be locked in your homes. He wants you to lose your jobs. He wants you to be poor and miserable just like he is. That's how you will recognize who is from which camp. I want you to be free. I want you to be happy. I want you to have your country back. I grew up under communist dictatorship and those types of tactics are very well known to me. They hated the freedom of speech so they were manipulating lying using the so-called mainstream media and using thugs to stop the freedom i say no more i say it's time for the real canadians they are not real canadians they hate democracy they hate freedoms they should move to china that's where they belong in china in Saudi Arabia, over there, they will perfectly fit. Venezuela. Venezuela, perfect place for them. But I didn't want to talk about them. I want to talk about us. For the sake of time, I put a few words together, if you can listen. Friends, Christians, patriots, thank you all for coming and standing here with us on the grounds of our own legislature. It is here in this building that the decisions concerning not only us, but our children and their children's children are being made. We are standing on the ground that is very important and symbolic. And I cannot think of a better place to address the issues that we are facing in our province here today. Where are we heading? If I was to put a title on my message, and you know I'm a pastor, so I do preach, and I will not apologize for it. I will not be sorry for what I believe in. I'll never apologize for the truth that comes from the creator of heavens and the, and the earth. But where are we heading? Ask yourself that question. As a nation, as a society, as people. What had happened with the once brave and godly country in which God and his ways were honored and respected? In just a few years ago, those tactics of those misguided, crazy people will not be allowed at all. There will be a, such a respect towards one man's religion. What happened with the once Bible-believing churches and Christians? We have lost our ways. What is even more scary, we have lost the ability to recognize what is right and what is wrong. For the past decades, the politicians, the media, they are too cowardly to be here and to cover this event. Because they only cover craziness and lies and deceptions. An educational system collaborated in building a nation without God, without His guidance, without His commandments and laws. 
a godless nation. And where are we today? Where they have brought us? Economical disaster, moral decay, a total collapse. The good is called evil. Just before this event, I was called names and I didn't even say anything yet. <laughs> that tells you that they hate the truth. They can't stand it. The evil is called good and good is called evil. Evil is paraded and exalted and honored everywhere we look. Our streets overpowered by thugs. That's what they are. Thugs. Justice system abandoned justice and only serve as a system. Those that swore to protect us are in fact destroying us. Taking our rights piece by piece. So this is not only the call for repentance but also the call for accountability. Those people think they can get away with everything. That they are not accountable to anyone. But that's not true. No. We came here today to bear witness that there is a living God that sees everything and hears everything. And that on day everyone one day, everyone will give an account for what they did and for what they said. They hate that truth. They hate to be accountable to anyone. But let me tell you something. From the heart of a Polish immigrant in 1981, I have seen the power of united people. When they said, no more, no more. Unity. Today, I don't care if you're a Christian or not. I don't care if you like what I'm saying or not, if it comes to my faith. But you have to, at some point, to put your differences aside and stand together, not just as Christians, or non-believers, but as Canadians to stand up and to fight for what's rightfully yours. This is not just their country. This is not just their country. This is our country. Everyone you see is accountable before God. We are accountable, the church and those working in the public square and the society as a whole. We have gathered here to say that He, God, is not pleased. We have lost our ways. The clouds have overshadowed the light. Divorce, homosexuality, indoctrination of children, that is, of course, if we did not murder them, in the abortion butcher shops. Corruption, treachery, falsehood becoming the new norm. Amen to that. Like cold rain in the fall, falling on us every day are those lies. The clouds are getting darker and more powerful, but not because the evil is getting stronger. It is because the light refuses to shine brighter. Amen. We have to understand what kind of power we possess. I'm telling you, unstoppable power if we unite. At some time, we have to say, forget about what divides us, let's unite. Let's focus on those things that unite us. We are losing. It is because the light refuses to shine brighter. The light, the church, the Christians, the righteous are weaker and dimmer. Instead of advancing, we have been 
retreating. Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. But as a nation, we have lost our ways. Edmund Burke once said, the only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is for good men to do nothing. Well, I see an army here. I see an army of patriots, an army of lovers. They're willing to do something in this cold day. Our nation is under judgment and God is on the move. He is shaking. He is sifting. He is separating the chaff from the wheat. He is looking for the righteous. He is looking for his lions, for his champions that are not satisfied with the leftovers from the tables of the hyenas. You see, the solution is only one. We have to go to our knees. When a man of God goes to his knees, that's where he is the most powerful. It's not because of his own strength, it's because the one that he's inviting into the battlefield is God himself. Amen. There is no salvation without repentance. Amen. If we want to see the move of God in our nation, in our cities, we must humble ourselves and stand in the gap. Amen. Deep inside we all know that we have walked away from the truth. We have rebelled against the one true living God. And because of that, we are being bombarded by the liars and deceivers. The judgment of God was on Sodom and Gomorrah because they have committed wicked ways. Sexual perversions and abuse of power over the poor, the widows and the orphans. However, God would spare these cities if Abraham would find ten righteous people. God said, for the sake of ten... For the sake of ten, I will not destroy it. Abraham, however, was not able to find ten righteous people. And destruction was not stopped. Do you want the destruction to be stopped? It's in our hands. The wrath of God fell on those wicked cities. But here today, we are providing, proving... That we are more than 10 willing to stand up in a gap and to cry for His mercy, His justice, His righteousness in the land. This land, our land. Martin Luther King Jr. once said, the time is always right to do what is right. Let's learn from the mistakes of the past. Let's not repeat them. Let's do what is right today. Let's invite God back to this land. If Canada is a nation and in every level of the government will not go to its knees, peace, healing of the land and prosperity will not come. Cannot come. God will never bless evil and pride. There is no salvation without repentance. If you want to see the move of God in our nation, in our cities, we must humble ourselves and stand in the gap. And I am telling you today, that's the reason I am here. And later on, we're going to have an opportunity to go to our knees, all of us, whoever wants to stand in that gap and humble ourselves and say to God, God, if you don't come, it's over. Those guns are too powerful. Those people got too much money and too much power. But let me remind you something. 
that the Bible says that one can do a thousand, but two can do ten thousand, and there is more than two here. We have to become the gold that God wants to refine through fire. I think many of us are already in that fire. Our Savior, Jesus Christ, is purifying us using heat. So when we come out of the furnace, we will shine for God. We will be pure and holy. We have to be tired of the lukewarm, fuzzy feel, cheap grace, compromised, cowardly, politically correct, unrepented, pacified, exchanging the truth for comfort, selling Jesus for 30 shekels of silver for safety, irrelevant in a modern society, tickling ears, making deals with the enemy for the false peace. Church in North America, we have to change. When we go back to God, we will have his blessings and his protection. I'm doing this for 21 years. They hired assassins on my life. I have been arrested so many times I lost count. Over 300 tickets, including the first COVID ticket. And yet, I am still standing here. I fought with the... Minister of Justice, Premier of Alberta in courts. I fought with attorney generals and so many lawyers that at times my brother would say it's once again like in the middle of the lion's cave. So many of them. And yet, we are still here. Because my God is bigger than their idols. When God's protection will come back and his blessings will cover us, when the enemy will come with fear, we will say we have faith. When he comes with a disease, we have God's healing. When the devil comes with his lies, we have God's truth. When he comes with confusion, we have God's holy word. When depression hits hard, we have the joy of the Lord that is our strength. When he comes with thoughts of suicide or hopelessness, we have God's peace that surpasses all our understanding. They will look at you like they look at me. How can you do this? Year after year, year after year, police officers coming to me. Where do you get all this stuff to feed those thousands of homeless? And I can always point at the name that is above every other name. Yeah. It is because of Him. He provides. He protects. He enables. He opens the doors. We, the Church of Jesus Christ, are called for such a time as this. To bring the answer to the problems of today. Let's never again settle for hay when God offers to those who obey gold and silver. Let us go back to God and his statues. Let's fall to our faces and say, God, we have walked away from your ways, your laws, forgive us and heal the land. Heal our land, heal this land. I'm telling you, when you do that, when you humble yourself before the one that created you, you will never be depressed. You will never be suicidal. You will never walk in fear. You will be always victorious. And I bless you today and I thank you for coming and standing in the gap for your nation and for your children's nation. Be blessed.